Alongside the global release of the Honor 70 mid-range smartphone and the Magic Book 14 laptop, we have this from Honor, their Pad 8. So the Pad 8 is an affordable Android 12 tablet, 12 inches. It's very thin, it's only 6.9 millimeters and weighs only 520 grams. The screen's an IPS and it's got eight speakers built into it. 22 watt fast charging and being in an affordable tablet, it actually does offer quite a lot. So I'll be covering the pros and the cons and exactly what you can expect out of the new Pad 8 from Honor. This is what is included in the box. So we have our charger, it's nice and small, it's 22.5 watts and our Type-C to Type-A cable. The build of this tablet is very nice and it's only 6.9 millimeters thin and it just weighs 520 grams. So the back here is a alloy uni body. There's just a bit of plastic that is the top that I'll show you shortly for the wireless antenna reception. On the back here, we've got an autofocus camera. It's five megapixels and as you can see, it can take some, well, basic photos and video at 1080p, but at least we do have it and great that it's got autofocus. So you can take photos of text if need be. There's that strip there. So you do see it's a slightly different shade. That plastic, of course, used for the wireless antenna reception. By the way, I've had no problems with the coverage with it with wireless. It doesn't drop connection at all. So the buttons here, power on, volume up, they have a good feel to them. I think they're made, they, yeah, they're definitely made out of plastic, just painted our microphone. And you notice that along the bottom here, there's nothing. So no Pogo port pin connectors. Now, is there a keyboard for it? Well, I haven't been sent one. I'm not too sure on the availability of a keyboard with this global release version, but if it does connect up, it's going to, of course, be a Bluetooth keyboard, not hardware because, well, there's no Pogo port pins on the bottom. Honor has not overlooked the audio here because the Pad 8 does have eight speakers built into it for our sound. You can see there with the little grills either side. So we've got two on that side and then of course two on the other, but the, you'll see where we have the Type-C port. So the data transfer speeds are USB 2.0, not USB 3. There is no video out from this. I wouldn't expect it for an affordable price-friendly tablet like this model here. Then the display. So the Pad 8 display here does have a bezel that is quite slim. It's only 7.2 millimeters, and we do have a 87% screen to body ratio. So it's 12 inches, supports 10 touch points. The resolution's 2000 by 1200, 1 billion colors. It's an IPS, it's fully laminated. It's a good screen, not bad at all. Now the only criticism from me is the brightness. It tops out at about 340 nits, so it's not extremely bright. It's bright enough for indoor use. And if I do turn up that brightness, you see it gets very bright. It's gonna overpower my current camera settings. It's this, if you do intend to ever use it in direct sunlight, then you will struggle a little to be able to make it out. But for this pr price point, it's a good screen and a standard brightness there from it. That's also certified for low light blue, hardware solution for the low light blue filter that it does have, not software, and flicker free certified too. So I don't see any flicker with this IPS panel at all. It's got your ebook mode, so it turns it into black and white. You've got eye comfort, and you can of course tweak all the colors in here uh, under the color temperature. You're able to do that, which I do like to see, and you'd be surprised that some brands actually skip and leave those kind of things out. There is an automatic brightness so it does have an ambient light sensor built in it so all up it's a good screen it's just that i wish it was a little brighter than what it really is but no one's going to have an issue with it at all i think for indoor use definitely this tablet runs android 12 with magic ui that is their skin now you do have a lot of different features that you have on board with this with honor so you've got honor share so you can um share this with other devices you have from honor for example one of their phones like the honor 70 uh, their laptops too, and you do have their multi-screen collaboration mode too as well, so you can set that up. There's a lot of different extras in this. Now, what about the performance? Now, I just want to talk a little bit about that briefly, that I do find that multitasking on it um, is good. We've got six gigabytes of RAM and swapping over between different apps. I haven't really noticed too much of an issue. What I've sometimes seen is a little bit of a stutter now and then when, for example, I swipe here, go over to Google, it can sometimes be a little bit laggy then. Just now and then you do notice the limitations in the performance of that Snapdragon 680. It's a decent enough chip. It's not super powerful as you'll see from some of the benchmarks now. 
But just before I get onto those synthetic benchmarks, I just wanted to point out that when you first power it on, there are no bloatware apps, which is really good to see. Gboard, that's something I installed myself. Of course, it does come with Google Play. And yes, you will notice that some of these icons look very familiar to what we see with iOS. Yes, okay. Especially the, well, that little cog icon there for our settings and the calendar, and even the camera one too is looking pretty similar there. So this is the firmware, this is the latest that I do have, and you'll see the six gigabytes of hardware RAM plus the two gigabytes of what they call Honor RAM Turbo. But this is a basic caching system, and you do get approximately about 111 gigabytes free on first boot with it. Security patch level is from June the 1st, which is good. We're in August now, but, uh, well, in September, sorry, filming this in August. Uh, it's still okay. So that's the update that has come through on the latest. So we've got Widevine level one security level. So that means Amazon Prime Video. Unfortunately, no, it's still going to be in standard definition until it's whitelisted by Amazon, but Netflix is in full HD, which is good. Now the internal storage, quite quick. I didn't expect this. I thought it would be a little bit slow. I even thought maybe they'd be using eMMC storage like 5.1, but no, this seems to be UFS 2.2 spec storage here. So we are getting some very good sequential reads and writes for this kind of spec of tablet, considering the price point. Random reads are also good. So that is not gonna be holding us up. There's no bottleneck in the storage. The bottleneck is more the chipset too with the performance, as you can see. So Geekbench is showing us that, yes, this is now what I would consider entry-level performance really for 2022. So I, I kind of wish in a way they'd gone with the Dimensity 700. I mean, the Snapdragon 680 is an okay chip, but you see here that it's getting a little, well, towards the lower end, definitely. It's under 3,000 points. Now, if this was the Dimensity 700, we'd be looking at probably about 100,000 points more or so. Just a little bit better performance, especially in the GPU department. If you did intend to game on it, it's definitely welcomed, of course. So things like battery life, I'll get onto just a sec, but I wanted to point out that this chipset, while it is low powered, it really doesn't throttle at all. You can run it, push it hard, very hard, and it just won't throttle. This is the Wildlife Extreme throttling test, and you can see that dropping down only, well, it's not even 3% there, is nothing. So it basically does not throttle. Charge time is, it's not amazing, but it's okay. It's 22.5 watts again for the level, this being an affordable entry level tablet. It's not bad at all, 86 minutes. Some tablets will take two and a half hours with the 7,250 milliamp hour battery. And finally, the battery life, yes, good, very good. That's one of the strength, strengths of this tablet that you will get at least about nine, 10 hours of running the brightness at approximately 40% or so, depending on what you're doing. If you game a lot, then you can pretty much have that time down to around five, six hours. But this was a fixed battery test. So this result here was the brightness at 200 nits, which is well over halfway, considering the maximum brightness is only about 340 nits. It did a really good job with that looped fixed test. You can compare it to some of my other tablet reviews. Ebooks and PDFs do look very good on this. This is Google Play Books that I've uploaded some PDF files to, and the PDF performance here is reasonably good. You can see that sometimes it has to catch up a little bit, but overall, it's pretty quick and snappy for that. But what I want to know, of course, is the text. I'm so reading it here. Now, you might see, if you're definitely watching this at 4K, some lines coming through. Trust me, that is actually just an effect with the glass being fully laminated, the IPS panel below. I'm getting some analyzing that's that's happening. So when you're looking at it, that's not actually there. It's not the case. You can see what I mean here now. See how we're getting that wavery, those funny lines coming through. That's just on camera that that is happening. So when you're looking at it, it's more or less what I'm showing you right here now in this area, that it's sharp enough, it's clear enough, and with their ebook mode on, you're not really going to be hurting your eyes too, which is great. Then using an actual ebook and using it as an ebook reader, quite good. So you see here that that performance, of course, is really good. It's fine, it's fast. And because the tablet's only 512 grams, I can hold it one handed. And I've been sitting in bed and reading a few ebooks with this, and I find it to be fine. Yes, after about an hour or so, your arm gets quite tired, or about 30 minutes, but you can prop it up. But it's not really that heavy at all, and it does look good, and it doesn't put any strain on my eyes, too, as well. Now, you can invert this text, too, if you're using 
Google Play Books, that is. Well, other ebook readers too can do it. So you can have a black background and then the white text, whatever is more comfortable for you. But I do have it on that ebook mode at the moment, which puts it into black and white. Instead of the white being so bright, it's got the blue light filter too being applied there. This is just to show you too, when you've got it on that ebook mode, how everything's just a black and white. Gray scale displays are very friendly for your eyes for late time use. I'll just quickly flick that off. Then we go back into the normal color display. Now, if you intend to watch streaming videos, content, and just YouTube, that's 16 by nine aspect ratio, like right now, it's not bad. We do have a minor bottom and top bezel because of the aspect ratio, but it's not as bad as some other tablets. The aspect ratio is a 10 by six aspect ratio, which is a little different, not what we normally see. Then that brings me on to the audio quality. It is very good with this model here because of those eight speakers. Now they do have DTS-X Ultra and Honor's Heisting Sound with it, high-res audio certified. The only thing is there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but those speakers, they've got a bit of bass to them. They sound very good for such a thin tablet. And here's an example at maximum volume. There's no distortion either, either out of the speakers. As for gaming, well, I do want to make it clear that this is no flagship spec, so it won't have the greatest gaming performance. So you play the games on smooth settings, low settings. Uh, this is the highest frame rate option that we do get here with PUBG. So I will take a look and see what PUBG performance is like with this Snapdragon 680. So yeah, the game is playable. You will be able to get kills and things. It's going to be okay kind of performance. Just don't expect it to be amazing. And remember, I do have it on the lower settings. And occasionally I see a few little frame dips and lags, even with uh, PUBG here on what is basically the lowest settings you can run with the highest possible frame rate option that I do have for it. You see when they look around here that sometimes it looks a little bit laggy and that's probably because uh, I'm limited with the frame rate too as well. It's not running at frame 60 frames per second. It's actually well below that 45 or 30 that I'm limited to here. But still looking down the iron sights, it's all right. It's just, yeah, a, a little bit choppy there at times with games. Brief look now at the camera quality with the Pad 8. So this is the front facing camera and we do have 1080p video. It doesn't have any electronic image stabilization. I don't think that's too much of an issue. You're not gonna really be walking around with a tablet like this recording video but if you do then it's going to be a little bit shaky as you can see now i do have just kind of normal lighting on at the moment there's a little bit of grain to this image and the audio quality of course is the inbuilt microphone of the pad 8. so photo wise here are some samples this is the front facing camera and then we do have the rear camera now so it'll take an okay photo and the rear camera does have autofocus Iroh, what is the final verdict? Well, I think it's an excellent tablet for those of you that want just a more affordable tablet for lightweight work on it, okay? So you're not gonna do anything like play Genshin Impact on top settings at 60 frames per second. That, by the way, if you don't know, is a very demanding console level graphics game, multi-platform. It doesn't run very well on this chipset. You can play it, but you need to lower all of those settings down. But for general kind of tablet performance, I'm talking about social media, so YouTube, browsing the internet, things like that, light work, PDF files, eBooks, excellent. Listening to music, those eight speakers are very good. Hi-Fi audio certified, it's got DTS2 with it. The display brightness, well, it tops out at 340 nits. It might not be the brightest display out there, but it's fully laminated, good touch response to it, slim bezels, and a real slim and light build. The only problem is that if you did use the screen or wanted to use it in very bright environments or in direct sunlight, it will be a little bit more of a struggle there. So the cons are cons that I repeat often with tablets, and we're seeing fewer tablets too, by the way, and that is 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly not present. No micro SD card slot either. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. So that's probably the biggest one for most people because you've got 128 gigabytes of storage, around about, what is it, about uh, 110 gigabytes of free space. So if you fill that up, sadly, you're gonna have to start deleting files because, or using cloud services or Google Drive or something, 
because you cannot expand upon that storage. So there we go, it is an excellent affordable tablet for light Android 12 needs. But also check out my review here of the Honor Magic Book 14. That's a quite a good laptop there, 14 inches. It's got RTX 2050 graphics and Core i7 12th gen. And then we do have the new Honor 70 mid-range phone. Also quite a good product there. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I do hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.